Hey, hey, hey guys, this is Hawkeye and I am back with another episode of Fishing Planet Classic. And yes, I am still here in Quanchkin Lake. I know it seems like I've been here a while, but the truth is I am actually on both platforms here at the po this point in time. Kind of checking the differences and similarities. And one of the things I just recently found out, uh, I think you saw in the last episode of the uh, Fisherman Fishing Planet, I had discovered where the unique bass were in that game. Now, what I want to do in this particular one though today, I did find out where the unique uh, smallmouth buffalo are. Now, they had eluded me in this game previously, so I'm going to see if I can't at least locate them or at least locate some of their uh, smaller cousins, I guess. So, what we're going to do, guys, we're going to come in here. I want to go over to, I believe it's down south. I might be, no, no. It's swampy open space. Okay, we need to come in here. It's, as you can tell, it's not a peak. Truth be known, these things don't have, seem to have any uh, relationships to the peaks, honestly. Now, we need to make sure that we have gear that we can use to catch these guys. And right now, this is set up for gar, if I'm not mistaken. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change a few things. I'm going to go in here and change my hook sizes. Now for these guys, you want smaller hooks, about one aught. Uh, work just fine. You definitely don't want these. Everything else I've got here will work for this. So let me see what kind of baits we need to use. We've got... They don't go for a lot of things, honestly. They do like peas. They do like semolina balls and blood worms. So, and I believe mayflies is another one, another favorite of theirs. I think we might try a little bit of everything. So, since this is, let's see, this is a 35 pound. Let's go ahead and put, uh, let's put the mayflies on this one. On this one, let's put bloodworms. And on this one, peas. I'm kind of curious if that pea dough works, but I haven't gotten to that point where I can buy that yet. But I bet you anything they go for it. Let me actually let me check. It might tell you on here. It might just tell you on here. Let's see here. Peas. Well, they they go for small minnows. That's surprising. No, it doesn't say really. And their baits are different. Yeah, and the other one, they also go for bloodworms. And on the other one, they don't go for any of the uh, lures. On here, they go for spinners, shads, grubs, worms, and tubes. So basically, your you know your soft baits. So, eh, we're going to stick with bottom fishing on this, guys. Like I said, I haven't tried this here. And like I, and it's complete, obviously completely different. So, going to be kind of interested to see how it does. Alright, let's go ahead and pick a private room. Now, this could not work at all. I mean, it's always the possibility this will not work at all. The, the platforms are very different, at least for see, it seems to be for this map more than any of the others that I've seen. Not sure why that is. Anyway, here we are in the area that I've been getting them in the past and on uh, the fishermen. I come right over here. I'm going to go ahead and put a rod pod down. Let 
Now we're going to start with the peas. Now where I want to throw, I don't know if you can see, you have to kind of look at the tree line. But right here there's like a low notch in the trees. Now we don't want to cast it out that far, but you want it between about 120 to about 90 feet out. So I'm going to throw, it seems like about 100 feet is ideal, but anywhere between there I've got had gotten bites on the other one. Alright, that's not bad actually. I am interested to see if these other baits work. I see the thing is I don't have a marker, and my other one I do. <laughs> Let's try to get as close as we can to that one, too. Whoop. Let's put this one right here. And we'll try the mayflies. I don't know that they'll even be interested. Alright, now, I do have a float rod here. Oh, we're getting a bite. Kind of interested to see which bait it is they're going for here. Come on, you can do better than that. Ah, uh, hell, he quit. Maybe. The only thing is, there are a lot of small fish that go for the same thing, so... Alright, let's see what we got here. It's the blood worms. And that's what they bought, they bit off of. Yep, there we go. We got one. Smallmouth buffalo. Like I said, I really haven't caught them here except by accident. And now that I know where they are... Well, at least that's consistent between the platforms. Okay, try to get rid of that notches. How far out am I? Eh, it's a little close, but we'll 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 work with it here. See I'm kind of half expecting the peas to do really well. Like it does in Lone Star. But yeah, that's the thing. The reason they were so hard to find is because I was, the longest time, I was trying to approach this like I would on Lone Star, where they're usually on the bottom. But here they're not. They're not in a hole. If you look the map here, there are several holes right in front of me where I'm standing. But this location's not in one of the holes. It's only like maybe two, three feet deep really strange. Whoop. Now if the same holds true here, the timing seems to be the same as in Lone Star, which means in the early morning. And I would think in the mid-afternoon it's going to do really well. The peak, like I said earlier, doesn't seem to have any effect with these particular species. Okay, we're getting a good bite here. Off the peas. Give peas a chance. <laughs> and there's another one. Now, if we could just get that elusive unique, guys. Just get that unique, elusive unique. We know he's here. We know he's here. Let's bring it in about there. That That's about prime territory there. Prime territory. Let's see. I'm going to get out. 
Well, maybe I won't. Okay, there's my flow rod. I couldn't remember which one it was. I'm going to throw... See, I've got the pedo here. That's why I thought, well, wonder if that'll work. It doesn't say it, though. But it does say carp, which sometimes the smallmouth buffalo are kind of considered within... They're not really part of the carp family, but they're often called that because they eat same types of food. No, I'm going to go ahead and play it safe, use peas. Now we got to take it to 20 inches. 23 is, this, well, that's because it's got a leader on it. That, is, that should still be alright. Let's put a one-odd hook. You don't want anything bigger than that. Alright, let's see if we can get right out there at about 100 feet. Well, that's close. <laughs> Can't get it exact since I don't have any markers. Actually, I could get a marker, couldn't I? Well, let's see what this guy does first. Come on. Looks like we got a couple of them going for it. All right, there we go. Well, this is not something very big. Let's see what it is. It is a bluegill. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's let's change that. I mean, we want at least to have a shot at this. Let's see. It said small minnows. I'm gonna try that. Set small minnows. Just see what it does. Of course, that could mean we might get some crappie too. That's better. Yeah, I want to cast this out a little bit more, and I'm gonna change the bobber. That's a night bobber I've got on there, and. For some reason, in the daytime, they're really hard to see. Let's see here. Uh, <laughs> Boppers. Here we go. Let's put that one on. That should help a little bit. Damn, that didn't cast out very far at all, did it? Alright guys, looks like we've got something on here. I think this time I'm going to go ahead and put a marker down because it will... For future... There we go, we got another one. It'll make it easier to cast. Each one's been getting a little bit bigger. Let's see here. Let me go ahead and make that marker set mark for last fish right there and it's right in front of the front of the hole it's interesting right in front of the hole so if you were to go a little bit further you'd be in the hole huh very interesting indeed All right, we're going to go ahead and put that one down. Let's see if we have time to do some float fishing here with the peas. Yeah, I can't even cast that out that far with this. I'm going to have to put a heavier bobber on there just to get it out there. Alright, let's use one of these pearl shaped floats. These, let's see. Maximum floating weight. Let's try this one. 
This might give me a little bit more distance anyway. Yeah, perfect. Right where it needs to be. I don't know if the line's too heavy, if something's up with the reel. I don't know. There we go. Whoa! Okay. Guess he wanted that. Yeah, this is a little fish. Another decent small mouth. Yeah, I think I might be hitting the wrong time here, though. Maybe it needs to be partly cloudy or something. I don't know. Just getting the regular common size ones. I think when I did it last time on the fisherman, it was a partly cloudy day. There we go. Another regular size one. Hmm. Well guys, one thing I have noticed is as it gets later in the day, just like on Lone Star, the less and less they bite. Now the peak on this type of day is pretty limited, honestly. I mean, well wait a minute, it changed. It was the sloping up peak period, so now the peak period was just past. Okay, I'm confused. <laughs> More than most likely, these guys are going to start biting again once we get back to um, probably about 3 to 5 p.m. But I think I might go ahead and pick things up. Because I don't think we're going to get as much action at this point in time. At least not with these guys. Contemplating running over there since we're still in the peak and seeing if we can't pick up a couple of largemouth. I am determined to get the unique smallmouth buffalo here, guys. I am a determined. I just don't want to be doing the same exact species on both platforms. Keep things a little bit different. I mean, you know, mix it up a little bit. I'm not saying I won't be doing it. I just won't be doing it so close together. Let's see here. I need to get...